But the structure of the LTAF being open-ended, I just feel it's not it's not the best structure when we actually already have closed end fund structures, whether they whether they're you know the the closed end GPLP um, with a more fluid administrative secondary yep. market for them, or indeed, you know the the private the London listed private equity investment trusts and similar um, across the continent and investment companies. The so, issue is you know liquidity in that market and but, discounts and and that has turned I think quite a few managers off. And to be honest, uh, uh, there's a there's a lot of financial advisors or or DC pension scheme managers that don't because they don't they only play in the open ended fund world they don't really they're not so aware of of the listed fund world the closed end listed fund world that seems kind of crazy to me because we're going to all of these ends to ensure that let's say a defined contribution scheme can get access to private equity style returns they already can but they they're can. just not familiar with it and so we're going to create a suboptimal vehicle that yeah. has real risk, that has presumably huge cash drag, which defeats the purpose in the... So um, we haven't gone into the why the open end of the LTAF is suboptimal, but it, it's exactly that. You've got a liquidity mismatch. So, you know, these vehicles will be offering, whether it's quarterly or six-monthly or even annual um, redemptions. I mean, that's... It's fine, but a manager still has to sell assets if they get a lot of redemptions at the same time. Now, yeah, I, I certainly don't think the the groups that are interested in this space and are, are, are setting funds up at, at the moment have got no worries or qualms about. It's when they become more of a retail product and they become marketed directly mm. to retail, small retail, who won't necessarily, they'll be sold, as you say, investment, uh, private equity style returns. Well, what is a private equity style return? The IRRs, which private equity market themselves on at the moment, quite rightly, are based on when capital is, is called. So you're not getting the cash drag. And with an open-ended fund, you put all of your cash in straight away uh that's you know that's that's fine if it's fully invested but even then i think that the ltaf is required to have a cash buffer 10 15 20 percent needs to be in cash or more cash equivalents liquid equivalents so this is so the immediately opposite. you're getting yeah diluted returns this is the you, opposite of what an institution would do they'd absolutely. overcommit in order to hit their targets absolutely. here it's a deliberate strategy of undercommitting in the uh, exactly, uh, and then the other side is, as I say, you know, if managers are being hit by redemptions, yes, they have the ability to to gate. So, up to five percent of the fund can be redeemed at you know one redemption mm. cycle. If you get hit by redemptions, and you know over a two or three year period, however long it it, it is, and a bunch of investors leave, but your loyal investors are left with a bit of a, a rump portfolio. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the managers have had to sell down. Well, this the, is what happened to Woodford, really, isn't it? Yeah. To I mean, some that, degree, it is. Absolutely, yeah. it, it is. Neil Woodford was an active fund manager with an open-ended fund, celebrity, really, who started investing in, um, in private companies and quite small kind yeah. of tech ones as well and ran into this mismatch problem and... It was a big, and this is the real problem. I think it's like you say, like the names that are looking at it now, their quality. But as soon as you get a kind of a government endorsed structure like this that can be taken down to the lowest common denominator, it only takes one yeah. fund to hit the headlines for the entire industry and structure to be discredited. That's my fear. That is my fear. 